Welcome to worship for Sunday, November 20th, 2022, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. This is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian calendar, when we celebrate everything there is about Jesus. Today there are two scripture passages. The first is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. Hear God's word for you today. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked Jesus, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The second reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here is this reading. May God bless it and all scripture to our understanding today and in the days ahead. Sunday is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year on the calendar devoted to celebrating Jesus Christ and and everything that is Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We celebrate everything that Jesus is, everything that Jesus was, everything that Jesus ever will be. The scripture passages from the lectionary uh, speak of Jesus as King. What do we mean when we say Jesus Christ is our King? Kings and queens today are no longer what they were in the past, no longer all-powerful sovereigns who control the lives of their people, the livelihoods, the choices, even the destinies of their subjects, as in the past. In biblical days, a, a good king could bring bounty and blessing to the people. A bad king could make life miserable, or worse, even take away life. To be subject to the king, to obey the king, was to do whatever the king wanted. So when the Bible says Jesus is our king, or the kingdom of God is near, or the kingdom of God is here, or or when we pray, thy kingdom come, what are we really saying? We are saying that we want Jesus to control our lives and guide our choices. We are saying that we will do 
whatever Jesus wants us to do. We are pledging. We, we want God to be in charge of our lives completely. If Christ is our king, if God is our sovereign ruler, then we pledge, we promise ourselves to do whatever God wants us to do. If we live in Christ's kingdom, if, if we are members of the realm of God, then we will serve God every day in every possible way, in everything we do. We will use our gifts to advance God's plan, to, to serve God's purpose. We will live in God's realm, God's kingdom, completely subject to God's will, serving always and every day as one whom God controls. I will give God complete control of my life. The kingdom of God was not the kind of kingdom the disciples or the people of that day, of the early church, not the kind of king they imagined. They lived in a world of Roman military power and control uh, when the king could kill or crush or destroy with one command, and often did. Uh, probably they pictured a Messiah who, who would come as the kings of the world had come, with power, even with violence, to establish an independent nation around Jerusalem, to defeat their worldly enemies, and, and to give the people wealth and privilege. But Jesus was not that kind of king, and the kingdom of God is not of this world. Instead, instead of power, Jesus came with sacrifice. Instead of condemnation, Jesus came with forgiveness. In, instead of control, Jesus came with compassion. Instead of taking all that could be taken, Jesus gave and shared and poured out. Jesus was a whole new kind of king. Jesus lifted up the lowest and the least. Jesus stood beside the weak and the vulnerable and gave them power. Jesus healed the sick and the broken. Jesus broke the bonds of oppression and manipulation. Jesus called for justice and mercy and generosity and joy. And Jesus called us to the same, to serve the poor, to bring hope to the outcast, to offer fulfillment to everyone, to, to love without barriers or boundaries. If we serve this kind of sovereign, we must help to shape an entirely different kind of world. A world based not on power, but on love. A world based on love. The thing is, with the coming of Jesus Christ, Scripture tells us, and we believe, that this sovereign realm, this kingdom of God, ruled by God, already exists. It has come. The kingdom of love is already here. We already are, we can now be, and we will always be people of God. People who accept God's rule and God's reign, God's control and God's guidance. People who pledge to serve God by showing love, by living justice and compassion, by following Jesus, even into sacrifice or suffering. At the same time, we live in this world with, with its temptations, with its enticements, with its power and politics. Sometimes it is really hard to see the world that God has promised while living in this world, the, the realm where God is in control, when all we see around us is war and violence and terrorism and greed and hatred, and pain, and cruelty, and, and so many other evils. When bad things happen 
all around us, it is sometimes hard to see God's kingdom. How can we truly say God's kingdom is here and now? How can we say God is in charge when clearly there is suffering and injustice that God would not want, does not want? That's what's so difficult for to understand or to explain. And, and that's, in fact, what keeps a lot of people from believing in God, the fact that there is evil in the world. If God is in charge, why do bad things happen? Ever happen. The scripture suggests that there are two worlds, two realms, two ways of being that exist at the very same time. And God offers us the choice of citizenship, where we will live, a choice of which world to belong to, which ruler to serve. Will we serve this world or will we serve God? If we serve this world, then our reward is obvious. It is of this world, power, wealth, pleasure, success, comfort, popularity, whatever it is, that is most important to you. Whatever you put your energy and the most energy into, that's our reward in this world. But if we choose, if you choose to serve God, your reward is less obvious, but oh, so much more valuable. If we choose to belong to the kingdom of God, then we receive the joy of being with God for all eternity. Starting now and, and lasting always, you belong to God. You belong with God. It is possible now to see the signs of God's realm, God's kingdom, to know moments of God's presence, glimpses of grace, we see signs of God most often when we are working for God's kingdom, when we are serving God to bring about the justice, the compassion, the joy, the peace, the wholeness that God has promised. That is when we see God most clearly. We see and feel and know God's sovereignty most when we are doing what Jesus did, when we are lifting up the poor and the needy, giving comfort to those who, who have suffered, sharing strength with any who are weak, offering hope, offering and sharing joy, working for peace, working for justice for all. To serve God, to be a citizen in God's realm is to live the life of love, to love as Jesus loved. When we live as people of God, sovereign, God's sovereignty, as people who belong to God, we experience God's presence and God's power. We enter a reality that is not obvious to everyone, but is transformative and inspiring, a reality of God's care and comfort, God's challenge and inspiration, a reality where anything is possible. That is God's kingdom. There, there will still be evil, and suffering in the world and in our lives, but, but God can transform that evil to good. God can turn death into resurrection, change suffering into hope, transform darkness into light. God makes anything possible. Imagine life completely and wholly in God's power. Imagine all that you could do and be. Imagine all that we could create and share. Imagine if everyone knew the concrete reality of God's care, God's comfort, God's healing, God's love. If everyone knew. Imagine a world of justice for all, hope for everyone, endless possibility. Imagine a realm, a reality, a way of life so wrapped up in God. Christ the King Sunday is about not only imagining such a realm of God, but living into that reality and making it happen. Living as people who know it to be so, that God is in charge and God's love reigns. 
Christ the King Sunday is about living your life as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Because our king, unlike most kings of the world, our king transfers power, gives power to the citizens of the kingdom. Our King Jesus pours out the Holy Spirit on, on all, any who would receive God's gifts and makes us able to transform and heal and love and comfort and care just like Jesus did. God enables us to be Christ's presence in the world so that others can see and share and know God's love and God's grace. You are the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world because you are members of God's kingdom. In a very real sense, if you choose to serve God, if you choose to follow Jesus Christ, you are no longer a citizen of this world. You are no longer subject to this world. You are, you are in God's world. You belong to God. You're not in Kansas anymore. None of us are. Now, all of us, we belong to God. You're a citizen of God's realm, under God's care and domination and dominion, under God's rules and responsibilities. You belong to God. When you're looking for signs of God's kingdom, evidence of God's care and God's call, you will see God all around you. In the next few weeks of Advent, we will be consciously looking for those signs of God, the presence of God with us. The signs of God with us are all around us, everywhere we look. This week, we celebrate Thanksgiving, a time, of, a time to recognize all of God's gifts, everything that God has given to us in family and friends and food and fellowship and even football and parades and celebrations of all that is good. So as you go into this week ahead, as you count your many blessings, notice also your dual citizenship. Notice both the signs of this world with all its need and the signs of God's abundant grace, God's presence that will meet every need. Notice the ways that God's grace can transform the world's need and answer the call of the king to share God's love and to make a difference. Be a servant of King Jesus wherever you are able. Because you are able, we are able. Just as Jesus touched lives and brought wholeness, we serve the king by offering healing and forgiveness and comfort and hope, by offering grace. Notice the gifts of God all around you. Notice God's presence with you and live as God's beloved children in the kingdom of God's grace. Most of all, this weekend, every week, most of all, live joyfully, gratefully, generously, and purposefully as one who belongs to our gracious and glorious God, as a disciple of our remarkable and benevolent King, Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.